<clears throat> so here is an output of an Excel multiple regression. And the purpose of this question is not about using Excel, but uh, it's asking whether you would understand all the output of the Excel and uh, internally how it works. So here is the Excel output, but uh, intentionally some of these are left blank. So for example, you should be getting a number for this right here, the F test statistic, and also the P value next to it, but those are left blank and you, you have to fill them in. Uh, let's look at the very first question. Determine the overall significance of the combination of variables in the regression equation. And this is really about this F st statistic and the p-value. And uh, to explain what F test statistic is doing, uh, it's about the, the probability distribution of ratio of two mean sum of squares. So it's you, you have this value mean sum of squares and this value, and you take the ratio, that's your F test statistic. Uh, by the way, these values are simply sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So for example, if you take 979205 and divide by 46, you get this 21287.06. Okay, so that's how you get the mean squares, uh, just by dividing the first two numbers. And then uh, this F test statistic is just the, the ratio of the two. So F is, F is equal to this number divided by this number here. Okay. So let's try to calculate that using a calculator. Uh, Actually, I did have it somewhere up there. So I'll, I'll do it again. So 7866084 and then divide it by 21287.06. And the result is 369.524. So that goes in 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 this blank right here. Okay, once you get the F test statistic, then you have to get the p-value. And to get the p-value, you have to understand how the shape of the F test statistic looks like. So the F distribution looks like, let me draw. Uh, F distribution looks like this. It looks very similar to the chi-squared. And here's the zero, so it's not a symmetric distribution. And somewhere here you would have 369. I'm a bit exaggerating. In reality, the at 369.524, this value will be almost zero. You wouldn't be able to distinguish. But let's say this is 369.524. And the p-value is this right side because whenever you're doing the overall significance of the multiple regression, you're always doing the right tail test. So it's always this shaded area that's the p-value. Now that tells us that what you need to do is to find the area using this uh, distribution and your calculator has them in the uh, second vars, and you, you get the distribution menu. And if you go way, way down, you'll see the FCDF. That's the one that we're using. And I already have the numbers punched in. Uh, 369.24, uh, actually 524, that should have been 524, 524. And then uh, because we're trying to get the area from 369.524 until infinity, I should be really putting in the upper as infinity, but you don't have infinity in the calculator. So instead you have to put a high number. And for a big number, I just put million. And million is fine for the infinity replacement for any distribution calculation. So whether you're using the TCDF or chi-squared distribution or whenever you do any CDF and you have to plug in infinity, you can always use 1 million for 
the infinity, okay? And then here, the uh, degrees of freedom of the numerator and the denominators are the degrees of freedom in this column. So I just put those two in. And then if you take those and you paste it, and you get 2.52 e negative 34, that means 10 to the negative 34 power. So it's 2.52 times e to the negative. So let's see, 2.52 times 10 to the negative 34. So that's your p-value, and that's your significance. See, the closer the p-value is to 0, uh, the greater your significance is. So the, if this is almost your 10 to the negative 40, 34 is a really small value, right? So that means you have a very strong significance here. All right, so what does that mean? That means, uh, here the question was, uh, write the regression equation to the, the uh, let, let me get back to that uh, after explaining this uh, regression equation. So, so the regression equation is y hat equals to some intercept plus the coefficient times the predictor variables. And for a multiple regression, the equation changes depending on how many predictor variables you have. So for example, if you only had three predictor variables, this will be the uh, regression equation. But here you have four predictor variables, so you have to do one more. And the b0, b1, b2, b3, b4, those are coefficients, and those numbers are given in this chart right here. It says coefficients right here, right? So 35, negative 0 0.101, and so on and so on. So that's what I did. I just replaced the b0s to b b4s to be this one. So that's the answer. Uh, this answer says uh, that you can predict the value of y. So y hat means the, the predicted value of y just from your predictor value. So if you know, uh, I didn't bother to read the question, but uh, it says that if you know the population, number of licensed drivers, number of registered vehicles, and number of vehicle miles traveled, then you can use those numbers to figure out uh, the, the uh, number of tra traffic fatalities. So how many people die uh, maybe per year, I think. Yeah, didn't say, but I think it's per year. So uh, if you want to know number of people dying per year, you use this equation, okay? Then you can kind of have some idea. And this is a pretty important figure to, to use because uh, for policymakers, uh, this, this prediction could be used for various purposes, right? So that's, that's why you, you want to do the multiple regression. So uh, what I want to say is that we use multiple regression to come up with a prediction equation model from the predictors. However, not all predictions are good, right? So to find out whether this equation is trustworthy or not, what you need to know is the overall significance. That's what question A is doing. But this overall significance came out to be very small, which means it's a, it has a very strong significance, me, meaning that uh, this this thing here is very trustworthy. So this equation is trustworthy. Therefore, uh, you can use it to predict. So for example, here's the question C. Predict the number of fatalities if there are 3,581,000 people in the States, 781,000 drivers, 525 vehicles, and 12 million no, 12 billion 546 million mile, vehicle miles. So that those numbers are the values of the predictors and you just plug them into this predictor equation and you get the value for the y, right? Uh, however, you should, it, you should notice something strange here. See, this is 3,581,000, uh, but I only put 3,581. Why did I drop 1,000, the, the three zeros, which means 1,000? Well, uh, the question says that x1 is measured in thousands. Because the unit is thousands, you have to get rid of this because I just said it's 3 
million five hundred eighty-one thousand, which means it's the same as three thousand five hundred eighty-one thousand, or three thousand five hundred eighty-one times a thousand. Okay, so that's why you only need to put this much. Okay, and it goes the same way. So you put uh, seven eighty-one. Five to five; those are measured in thousands, and the last one is measured in millions. So three six zeros should be taken away. See, the last one is measured in millions, so six zeros are taken away. So this is what you have to do, and now you have to punch this into the calculator. And because I'm kind of getting, uh, let's see, yeah, let's just use the calculator. I was uh, thinking for a moment whether I want to do something else. 35.896, 35.896, okay, plus, uh, actually, minus, so minus uh, 0 0.101 times 3581, and then plus 0 0.194, times 781 minus 0 0.185 times 525 plus 0 0.029 times 12546. Then enter, you get 92.438. 92.438, so you have 92.438. Okay, so it says that uh, with this much, uh, you get about 92 people dying of uh, car crashes per year, okay? Okay, part D, which variables are the most influential predictors of the traffic fatalities at 0 0.01 level? Okay, I, I actually tried to solve this in class and I, I'm afraid I gave you a wrong answer, so let me correct it. I read it as which variable is the most influential predictor, so I just gave one. But here it's asking for most influential predictors, so it's plural. So that, that's actually the key. I, I misunderstood the question. Now, picking the most influential predictor actually has uh, multiple of different answers because there, there are different ways of getting the, the most influential. Uh, but here it says you have the 0 0.01 significance level. And if you look at it, this one is not under 0 0.01, but these three are. So if you go with the 0 0.01 significance level, this coefficient is not trustworthy, whereas these other three coefficients are trustworthy, so these are indeed influential. That's how you treat it. So the answer to this would be that you get x2, x3, and x4, but since these have names, I guess it's better to write them in, in it as a, as a actual, actual meaning. So, uh, the population is a no, but the number of licensed drivers and this much, that will be the answer to here. Okay, so number of licensed drivers, number of registered vehicles, number of vehicle miles uh, in, in millions, that would be, th these will be the influential predictors. And the population is out because the p-value is above, okay? All right. What percent of variation in fatalities cannot be explained by a combination of variables in the regression equation? Okay, so uh, for this question, you have to know the idea of coefficient of determination, or it's also called R squared, okay? And there's the adjusted R squared, but let's not bother with adjusted R squared. So, so uh, to, to be more accurate uh, for this type of question, you, you actually have to find the adjusted R squared. There's a formula for it, uh, but uh, just to save time, let, let's just go with R squared. Okay, so this, this will be good enough. All right, so uh, what does R squared mean? Well, R squared means this is the sum of squares of the regression divided by 
total sum of squares. Okay, well, uh, I don't want to to confuse you further by writing the formula, but I, I guess some of you might actually benefit from looking at the formula. So let me let me just write down the formula for you. So it's uh, sum of squares of re regression is sum of the predicted value minus the average value of y squared. Okay, and it's called sum of squares because you're adding the squares. Okay. On the other hand, the sum of squares of the total is sum of the actual value minus the average. Okay. And uh, to know the difference between these two is that uh, here you, you have the sum of squares of the prediction versus the mean value. And you, you may remember that uh, if you divide this by the number of uh, items minus one, so and if you divide this by n minus one, that's the variance, right? So uh, if you take these ratio and divide top and bottom by n minus one, uh, it gives you the variance of the regression over the variance of the entire set. Okay, And that has the following meaning. Uh, this tells you how much variation is predicted. And this is this tells you what is the actual variation. Because y is the actual value of the data, whereas y hat is the predicted value of the data. So this is the predicted variance, and this is the actual variance. And uh, what happens is that for regression, this value is always less than this value. So this ratio will always be less, uh, less or equal to one. And because it's a squared value, it's never negative. So this value will always be between zero to one. So R squared is always between zero to one. And this ratio tells you how much of the variation of the total thing is predicted, okay? So this is, in a way, this is like predicted, so, so percentage, of predicted variation out of total variation. And uh, rather than using this language in many textbooks, the standard way of explaining this is that uh, what percent of the variation is explained by the regression? That's how people write it, okay? And if you Think for a moment why these two are the same thing. Uh, you should know that uh, these actually mean the same thing, right? Okay, so uh, because the predicted variation out of total variation means that the what is what predicts the regression predicts, right? So uh, so this percentage this percentage of the variation is explained by the regression because the regression predicts that much variation, but. Uh, this one is actually slightly different because it's asking for cannot. So let's read the question again. What percent of the variation in fatalities are uh, cannot be explained by the combination of variables in the regression equation? So it, yeah, combination of variables is thrown in just to stress the fact that this is a multiple regression. But uh, what we're look, really looking at is what cannot be expressed explained by the regression. So it's the opposite of r squared. So so what the question is asking is it's asking for one minus r squared value that's what it's asking okay um, all right so if you got that far then now you have to figure out how to get the r squared from the table sometimes the adjusted r squared is given to you in that case you just use that value but unfortunately it's not given to us so we have to make do with this this table we have to find out what to do well uh, as I explained, the formula is sum of squares of the regression uh, divided by total sum of squares, and we do have the sum of squares here, right? And sum of squares of the total is this, and sum of squares of the regression is this. So what we can do is we can divide this value by uh, 
by the total sum of squares, which is this one, and uh, that one is, uh, well, we'll have to use the calculator again. Let's see. Three one four six four three three six, and then divide it by three two four four three five four one. Okay, and you get point nine six nine eight. But we want the so this is point nine six nine eight. But then the answer would be one minus that, right? One minus point. 9698. So if you do that, uh, if you do 1 minus the answer, then you get 0 0.0301. So that means 3.01% is not explained by the regression. Okay, And this is another measure of how effective your regression is. So I just said this regression is very trustworthy, right? Uh, but here it's it's saying that 97% uh, of the data is explained by uh, what's given. So, so I think this should be 9. Uh, it's what's given. Uh, okay. So, so that's why you uh, that's why you trust it more okay so so only 3.0 percent cannot be explained by the regression that's what it's saying okay now let's get here find the 95 percent confidence interval for the coefficient for your number of vehicles well so the number of vehicles is this one, number of vehicles is X3. So we're looking at X3. So let's look at this one here. Let's look at this. And first, this is the actual coefficient, but the, it comes with some error, right? And it says uh, 0 0.04 is the standard error for this thing. Uh, and uh, so this is like the uh, standard deviation, uh, S, okay? And these are T statistic, and from there you get the p-value, how trustworthy this value is. So this one is not needed for now. What you need to know is uh, that the margin of error is equal to the T critical value times the standard error, which is this value right here. Okay. Um, now, how do you get the critical value here? Well, uh, the critical value needs to be obtained from, from this one, right? So first, figure out what alpha is. Alpha is 1 minus confidence level, so it's 1 minus 0 0.95, which is 0 0.05. And to get T alpha over 2, to get the critical value, you have to do inverse T, right, of 1 minus 0 0.05. But, you know, T distribution requires degrees of freedom, right? So what do you put as your degrees of freedom? Well, you put the degrees of freedom as your residual degrees of freedom. Okay, so it should be 46. So let me write here, residual degrees of freedom, which is 46. Okay. And let's try to use the calculator. Go to inverse T. And then we put in, oh, sorry, this is two-tailed, so I need, see, confidence interval is always two-tailed, so you, you have to divide by two. Okay, so you have... 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 2, and degrees of freedom is 46. And then paste, and you get the value 2.0128, or 2.013.
So that's going to be equal to 2.013. Okay, so once you get the 2.013, uh, then you get the margin of error. So margin of error E is 2.013 times the standard error, and standard error is 0 0.054, right? So let's do that. Uh, times 0 0.054. And that gives you 0 0.1087. OK. And then uh, now you can write down the confidence interval because confidence interval is represent as the, the middle value plus or minus e, right? So the confidence interval is now equal to uh, negative 0 0.185 plus or minus let me just delete this the the margin of error so is negative 0 0.185 plus or minus 0 0.1087 okay now depending on the question you might be asked to write this as an interval notation in that case you have to actually subtract and add so let's do that uh, so if you have negative 0.185 and then you have to uh, subtract the answer above then this is what you get and you can also do uh, negative 0.185 plus 0 0.1087 and you get the other value okay so negative 0.2937, negative 0.2937, right? And the coefficient of 3, x variable 3, is called b3, right? So b3 is between this value and the other value, which is negative 0.0763 negative 0 0.0763 okay so that's that's how you get it okay so that's the confidence interval uh, and it's really saying that this coefficient this value is an estimation and the true value of this coefficient lies somewhere between here and there uh, with 95 percent confidence level that's what it means